after putting India on the global outsourcing map, he has now been handpicked by the UPA government to head one of its most ambitious projects. On our show today, Nandan Nilikani, the chairman of the Unique Identification Authority of India. Thanks so much for being with us here Thank on you, the Shweta. show. If I were to just describe your role, you have to provide a unique number to a billion plus Indians, or shall we say, one sixth of the world's total population. Quite a daunting task. Also. Yeah, it is a very large task, and uh, to give a unique number to every Indian resident, you know, it's, it's really a non-trivial problem. And uh, but I think you know, it's it's something which has to be done, and it's something which, you know, me and my team are going to focus fully on uh, on on doing as best as we can. But what amazes most people is your decision to actually cross the divide, to move from the private sector to the public sector. Why did this project excite you so much to actually go ahead and make Well, first of all, this project has uh, potential for having uh, you know, a big impact if it's executed well and it delivers on the promise of what is being done. Second, you know, this is at the invitation of the Prime Minister. And right. you know, when the Prime Minister of the country calls you and asks you to pitch in on a project, you, know, you, you, ha you have to accept. And third, you know, I've been involved with some kind of public service for the last 10 years. I did something in Bangalore, then I was on the, uh, involved with setting up the National Urban Renewal Mission and many things like that. And uh, fourth, I think my colleagues were very gracious. Uh, mm -hmm. They said that it's worth sort of sacrificing me for a larger cause. Yes, they indeed have sacrificed you. You've, you've put it very well. But tell us a little more. We do know that uh, your appointment was mooted by the Prime Minister himself. But tell us a little more about how and when he actually told you about this project and told you to take it up. Well, all this happened, uh, you know, obviously between the time the government came and, and January 25th, June 25th when the decision was announced. So it happened actually quite quickly. And, uh, uh, you know, this project seemed to be the right thing uh, for someone like me because uh, it is about change but also it's a huge part of it is about technology and right. the fact that I'd spent 30 years in technology uh, in some sense I guess was something I could, I, I could be a potential person to run this thing. In fact uh, in your book uh, Imagining India you also talked about how you were very wary of uh, telling uh, policy makers that technology is the solution it's the answer to many social ills because you were wary of being labeled as the computer boy. Now it's the same computer boy who is actually taking on this project for the government uh, did your book actually give ideas to the Prime Minister or to policy makers to actually get you to do this project? Well, I mean, that's something really you should ask them. But yes, in some, uh, uh, I actually have an entire chapter in my book right. on how technology can be used for social transformation. And in some sense, I'm being asked to walk the talk now. Absolutely. One month uh, into office already, are there stark differences you're seeing between the public sector and the private sector? No, no, it's different in so many ways. I mean, first of all, I'm moving from the private sector to the public sector. The second is I'm moving from Bangalore to Delhi. The third is I'm moving from an established setup which I had to a startup. Hmm. So, you know, it just now there are just three of us in the office and we have to get staff. We don't have an office. We are temporarily operating through the generosity of the planning commission. Right. Uh, I don't have pro the kind of secretarial help that I'm used to. I was used to in, in the right. office, so it's it's a different world. So it's taking me some time to get my feet on the ground. And the thing is that we can't allow the work to slacken. So we are we're just running full speed to do all the meetings and get all the buy-ins that we need. At the same time, at the back, we're trying to put in place the organization in, in place. But you are an entrepreneur uh, by yeah, it's spirit. Like, it's actually you know, it's, a, it's like a startup. And you, the, the way perhaps you went about setting up Infosys. You've often called yourself as an accidental entrepreneur. How would you describe this move of yours? How similar is it to say, setting up a again, business? It's, again, it's I'm an accidental social entrepreneur. or a, Well, I like to think of myself as a plumber, actually. <laughs> Why do you say yeah, that? Because this is about plumbing, you know. It's, it's, not, it's not grand policy or something. It's just about fixing the nuts and bolts of how things happen. That, that's an interesting way of describing something that the government calls its uh, most ambitious project. But there's nothing wrong with uh, plumbing, I think. Uh, I think uh, having a focus on plumbing is, is a good thing. Because today I think the challenges in India are essentially of implementation, of translating intent into reality. And to translate intent into reality, you need good, good, good underlying things. And hopefully what we do will help in that translation. Chuba.com.